mistress. George traced the number. I took a look. Uh, residential area, quiet street, deserted at night. Okay. I'll go down and check in on Brad tomorrow morning. I have to meet with that plumber first thing in the morning. So I have to get out of Martha's early, because I promised her a lazy morning. Lazy morning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll meet with Claudia for the drop, and then get home for an early dinner, and then we'll go. Okay, good. How's it going with Brad? Fine. Piece of cake. Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Travers, and welcome to Popcorn, where we tell you what is popping in the culture. You know, that's why we have the popcorn here. And today's guest, Matthew Reese, is the star of The Americans on FX, and in which he plays a Russian pretending to be American. Matthew himself is Welsh, pretending to be God knows what. I don't know. I think he's a deceptive man. That's why he's so convincing. And we've never met, but we're meeting now. So, Matthew, welcome. Thank welcome you very much. What an introduction. Whatever we call a show here. Look at that. <laughs> See, that force is fake, right? Of course. Yeah. This isn't even my real accent I'm speaking with now. I mean, people must be so disappointed to meet you. My mother's been saying that for years. years. <laughs> Does she say yes, that? Yes, yes. I mean, they watched you for like five years on Brothers and Sisters. Yes. And you're, you're this American lawyer mm. in the wine country. And if Sally Field is your mother, I know. you're pure American. Pure American. I just believed that. It wouldn't matter. If Even you... I believed it when I was on I set. You did, you know? And now you do a series where you are really Russian, but you're American again. And it's a great American accent, which means you're a tricky guy. Uh, that's been said before. Yeah, really. Yes. So, but you're doing it now so often. Mm. And when you're on a series like this, when you wake up, do you, I mean, do you try to stay so much in character that if I came to whatever room you were staying in and shook you, would you wake up and be American? Speaking Russian. Yes, yes. speaking Russian. No, you can't do that either. Yes. In this show. No, I, there's, um, funny enough, the, the parallels, the, the, the training I did in, I, I went to a very sort of, sort of institutionalized British drama school. What do you mean? It's the Royal Academy. The Royal Academy. Of dramatic art. And, and ironically enough, the, the year I went in, the, the principal at the time was going to revolutionize its, its teaching and brought in New York um, actor studio based teachers who kind of, you know, brought the whole Amer American version of, you know, Stanislavski. Mm -hmm. so, so their whole point, point of view is when you lie, you tell as much truth as possible. Or if you lie, then it comes from as much truth as possible. And ironically enough, Joe Weisberg, the creator of um, The Americans, once said about, you know, deception and when they, you know, when the CIA are approaching a similar situation or scenario, it's the same. You tell as much truth as possible, therefore there's less chance of being caught out. And you're further, you're not as removed, you're not sort of, you're not, you're not trying to transform in a chameleon-like way. You're trying to remain as truthful as possible because ultimately you're trying to convince the person in front of you and the audience. Therefore, there are parallels in, in both worlds. But I need to do due diligence, or you do, to, to those poor people that may not know what the Americans is at all. Who is this guy that you're playing? Philip Jennings, the part I play on the Americans, is one half of a KGB sleeper cell unit working in Washington, D.C. in the early 80s. And he was placed in Washington 15 years ago with another KGB agent played by Kerry Russell. And their mandate was to intelligence gather on behalf of the KGB during the height of the Cold War. And as a result of their unity, they've had to have children to create the perfect cover, to create the sort of perfect white picket fence family in order to secure that cover. But what we're seeing is in that first season is the growing love story. And mm. yet both of you are sleeping around for your job. Yes. Which another, another Hollywood story. I know. This is it. But, this but is it. <laughs> yes, another great Hollywood <laughs> parallel, I think That's you'll find. It. Yes. It is, yeah. But that was true, you know, that or the, the sort of the, the honey trapping, as they called it, was enormous, you know, at that time. The KGB even hired some sort of debonair English cad to sort of teach uh, um, agents sort of, sort of seduction skills, which I find I, I, uh, fascinating. There's some sort of probably a Terry Thomas character <laughs> in some bar teaching them how to water martinis. That's how it is in my head. <laughs> um, but yes, what's fantastic about that in the, in the first season, it's about this, the evolution or, or you know, the the involvement of, of their relationship and how difficult that is. And it's in its securing in the second season, 
how the the honey trapping, the the sleeping with people for intelligence, affects this newfound relationship in a in a very difficult, very difficult way. You're the guy. Your character is the guy that is sort of sneakingly liking America. You know? Yes. It was like maybe we should just stay here. Maybe. It's not so bad. Well, and she goes like, whoa. Yes. I, personally, the way I justified that was, yes, there is an absolute degree of the sort of an enjoyment of the materialism that's presented and, and the more capitalist elements of the, of the country. I've, in, in researching him as to where he would have grown up in Russia in sort of post-Second World War to Tobolsk, he would have grown up in abject poverty. So I think this life, this lifestyle for him is incredibly attractive. Um, I think the, the deeper resonance for him is, is the longevity of what they do and is whether it, it can be. I, I think he knows that there's a time limit on what they're doing. So I, I think his, in the first season, he talks of defection. I think that de that defection lies in the fact he wants to secure his children's future mm -hmm. more than, you know, a good pair of cowboy boots. Do you long to play a Welshman in in an American TV series? I wouldn't know what to do. You I wouldn't do it, know you? what to do. It would it would be I can't. So it's your goal basically. Yes. To take roles from American actors for the rest of your career. Uh, there was a pact. There's a pact that's made early on in drama school, the Royal Academy. That that's what they swear you have to swear to do is to go to America and take roles from hardworking American actors. It's a conspiracy. It is. And I think. I'm happy that we could reveal a little bit today and that you reveal it without shame. Without, I, I'm probably the first whistleblower. In fact, I probably won't be able to go back to the scepter dial after today. <laughs> but yeah, I think um, <laughs> after 1776, something was said. They said, we need to get back at them. And maybe we'll do it through the entertainment business, the business they call show. Which we know can influence anything. Yeah. What's going on? We're in. in. It's odd because I, I just thought of a film you were in in which you actually do play a Welshman, which is called The Edge of Love, and you are Dylan Thomas himself. Yes. That must have been so different for you to have actually played someone that uh, comes from your own country. Funnily enough, you had Kira Knightley, Sienna Miller, myself. Kira was English playing Welsh. Sienna was English playing Irish. I was Welsh, although character pretended to be English. It was, yeah, it was a comedy That's what a I say, virus. it's a schizophrenic life. It is. It is, it's just what you live there. Even the one time I did get to see you on stage, it was a while ago and it was on the West End and it was The Graduate with Kathleen wow. Turner. And again, yes. taking an iconic American role mm. of Benjamin Braddock, mm. you know, that we see as Dustin Hoffman. And you go on stage and say, I'm American again. <laughs> And that, was, that was sort of the first time that I pro legitimately played an American. And, and that's who helped me with the accent was Kathleen Turner. She did. She did. She did. She Even had, though she had to be stark naked every single performance. I never looked at her once. Well, but, that's just insulting. Uh, well, here's the, thing. here's the dilemma of a young 24-year-old on the West End stage for the first time with a major Hollywood star. So thank God, the part of Benjamin Braddock in that moment, she drops all her clothes all of them are gone. Yeah. All of them are gone. <laughs> She's wearing a smile and her high heels. <laughs> and Braddock is meant to have this kind of meltdown where he doesn't know where to look. Now, I thought, I always thought, I, I thought, if I look, she's going to think I'm not being true to the character and a little bit of a, a pervert, so I shouldn't look. But then I thought, if I don't look, she might be insulted that I'm not looking. I mean... Knowing I, Kathleen a little, I don't think she'd be bothered that you... No, I know, but I, it was a dilemma. But, however, I, di I never did look. Well, as we end, it's always in song. Oh. It's always in song. And I get, you could sing an American song in an American accent. Oh. Or a, a, a Welsh song in a Welsh accent, if you still really can do a Welsh accent. You know, because know. what you're doing now is I'm not believing. But, <laughs> but <laughs> it's up to you completely. You're free to do this. There's a, I was, Richard Burton was a, a first language Welsh speaker, as, as am I. And a, a, a very old friend of mine went to his house when he was home once. Uh, and we're from a great tradition of, of singing. Um, oh, good. The Welsh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, incredibly yeah. so. And, and Richard was asked to sing. And he said, I'm going to sing my favorite song. And he was stunned as to what he sang. And, and sadly, I won't be able to tell you what the song is about. But I'll happily sing it for it's you. Good. They should, we should wonder. Yes. <laughs> maybe people who speak Welsh could write in. They can. Oh, no, I can't sing it. Why can't I you? I just realized it has one word. 
it has an English profanity in it. We uh, don't care. No, I couldn't. <laughs> this I is, couldn't do we'll it. We'll just blip it. Somebody Welsh will be able to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, you can, you can say blip when you get to that word. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> See? I'll bleep myself. <laughs> we've been there. You can tell we've been oh, there. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Rhyfedd beth am elus yw dyn yn marw a'i blyf ben fyw. Claddw i dyf yn hen box bren a'r hen goff... Yn... I'm sorry, sorry. Did you notice it? Yn sigloi ben a'r hen... Yn sigloi ben a'r hen... Yn sigloi ben... And then it goes on and on, but that's basically <laughs> but it. But that's it. And but if people write in and tell you what it's about, it's... Um... So I have to wait. You won't even tell me later. No. God. I know. What a pain in the ass. But, but you know, you'll be happy. I don't... But I will be happy mm. when I find it out. You will. Okay, well, I will get that answer. And the next time you're on, I will force you to do another Welsh song with all profanities in it. Done. Yes. I pitched that one a little too yeah. high. I was a little, I'm a little disappointed with <laughs> no, myself. It was myself. perfect for me. I felt it. Good. I felt the authenticity. <laughs> Matthew, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Real pleasure. <laughs>